Hello and uh, welcome back and today we have this $10 frequency counter it is uh, 8 digits it is from China and it's from uh, John Kwan Studios and it's the PLJ 8 LED and it is the friendly color of blue it will hurt your eyes <laughs> but it is able uh, it has two channels and the first channel goes uh, up to uh, 60 megahertz and the second channel goes up to 2.4 gigahertz which is a lot and uh, yeah although they talk about uh, a channel b channel or channel one or channel two it actually has one channel it just switches over automatically so uh, i think at, the, at that point and it switches over and i think the limit is about uh, 60 uh, megahertz they will just move the, the dot by itself so it's uh, auto uh, switching so uh, let's see what it does so it's an uh, unpacked as you can see it does have eight digits it comes with uh, two of these uh, wires uh, one is the power the other one is the input for the radio signal so let's connect those It, uh, the, the internal oscillator is uh, kind of good I think it's even temperature uh, compensated although you can adjust it here you see the, the oscillator block and here you see the adjustment it is all very small but here it is so that means when we switch it on we probably need to wait a few seconds um, I have here a signal generator because we're gonna test it uh, my Maconi that I usually use uh, goes only up to 1 gigahertz and this one should go up to 2.4 so that's why I need another one and this one goes up to 5 or 7 gig it's a lot so let's switch this on it goes to 8 gigahertz even I saw it just in the display so that's good I will just start at uh, 1 megahertz and uh, it's connected to my reference of course and let's see if we power it on what happens which is the right side is the power let's see oh my god that is super bright and it's blue it really well at least for me it hurts my eyes but okay it's my fault I wanted to buy the cheapest <laughs> and I did and the blue light seems to be the, the cheapest but uh, you can see it's reflecting everywhere so we put on the input uh, here it is and you see it is still stabilizing a little bit this is at, at, at 1 megahertz and uh, it's actually not that bad it has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros for 1 megahertz I think that's a nice resolution and, and it is more or less correct and, and you can buy these things between 10 and 20 euros if you build a nice plastic around it you even have a proper frequency counter nothing wrong with that so let's see uh, let's put a little bit more 2, 3 3 megahertz Ten. Hmm. Ten is a real ten to me. 
And what happens if we do a bit more? Let's go big steps. Let's go to 50 megahertz. And it's really bright, so let, let's see what we can do with that, because it's hurting my eyes, to be honest. Uh, I have here, back. So let's see the menu. I don't know what this is. Oh, it looks like I'm switching modes. Yeah. This button, maybe. Yes. F1. Mm, no, I don't want to do any changes to the IF. No. Channel A. Uh, let that be automatic. The F. Ah, this one. Five, six. Ow. One, two. I think a brightness of two is nice better already okay uh, let's continue and it should switch over if we are above 60 so let's see what happens when we come to 60 here we go still normal yeah there it went okay now it switched to the B channel now I like to go a lot uh, higher because it should be able to do a lot more we are now at 700 megahertz and I don't see that, so maybe I by accident switched channels over. Let me see. Wait. No, the AF is the offset. I don't want that. Channel A. L. I. Auto, we want auto. Okay. Then why is that not working? Oh, <laughs> my PLL is unlocked. I should use the second channel. <laughs> um, silly me, I need to switch over. Uh, mode, B channel, yes. Okay, back. Okay, I stopped filming because I kept trying and kept trying, but uh, the sensitivity goes completely down above uh, 150, 160 megahertz. So I'm not even able to uh, to to test if it goes to uh, 2.4 gigahertz um, because I fear this uh, signal generator. It just sends out uh, zero dBm, and I'm now on 160, and it actually says 160. But if I go 170 you see it's all already losing count a little bit and um, I'm not using a probe I'm just directly connected I can go to 180 and, and it's just missing counts and uh, when I go to 160 it is good so this is really a sensitivity uh, problem 
So you should put in more than, than 0 dBm. Okay. Just as a comparison, I'm just putting the same uh, 0 dBm, 50 millivolts, 52. I'm putting it in the, I don't know, 10, 20 year old, old HP. And instead of uh, 160 megahertz, I'm putting 1.19 uh, gigahertz. And it just thinks it's fine. And then I'm gonna insert it into my TTI. That's a more modern meter. And oh, well, before I even connect the connector, it, so 15 millivolts is, is a kind of a normal value for your frequency counter to respond. And it, it just doesn't do that. So nice for hobby use. Um, nice for up to 140, I think we measured, and above that, it's you need to put a lot of a lot of uh, signal into it. But if you put an antenna and you keep your radio close, it will probably work. So uh, very nice for uh, HF, I would say. Um, I did try also with my my radio. So if I go to uh, 430 and I use this wire as an antenna, then it does work. As you see, 430, 42. But uh, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. So yeah, I don't know. It does probably does work, but I'm not able to test it because uh, sensitivity. So, if you use it below uh, the 140, you probably have a nice meter, but you get what you pay for. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily very enthusiastic as you uh, could see, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.